In this video, we will talk about work done by torque. We will explain, conceptually and mathematically, how a torque does work, and how this work is related to the change in kinetic energy of that rotating system through a theorem known as work kinetic energy theorem that we have already seen for linear motion. We will finally solve a few examples to illustrate the concepts presented. Let us look at the following rotating system. A system consists of a point mass spinning in a counterclockwise direction. This mass is being acted upon by a tangential force F at a point with a position vector R situated at distance R from the axis of rotation. Such a force F and position vector R creates a torque that will rotate the system in counterclockwise direction as shown and the direction of this torque is of course coming out of the board. As the object moves from say point I to point F under the influence of this force F and it undergoes a displacement of delta S, we know there is work done by this force according to the familiar formula that we have already seen before, F delta S. At the same time, we also know that the arc length delta S, the linear displacement, is related to the angular displacement delta theta through this equation. By substituting this equation in here, we get work equals F R delta theta. Now we know F R because the direction or the angle between F and R is 90 degrees. F times R is quite simply is the magnitude of that torque and then times that with delta theta and you get the same work. So this equation in the box can be viewed as work done by this torque on this body as it rotates the body at distance or angular distance delta theta. Let's check the units. Torque is quantified in the unit of Newton meter. Delta theta is quantified in the unit of a radian. Radian has no dimensions. So that means the unit for work is indeed just Newton meter or joules as we have seen before. Another thing to note, because of this torque, we know there is an angular acceleration, namely this mass has an angular acceleration. That means its spinning is increasing with respect to time. It's spinning faster and faster. So its angular velocity here is less than the angular velocity there. So let's call the angular velocity or angular speed rather at the final point omega f and angular speed at the initial point omega i. Because the system is spinning faster and faster, omega f is greater than omega i. That means the kinetic energy of rotation at the final point must be also greater than the kinetic energy of rotation at the initial point. This results in the increase or the change in the kinetic energy of the system defined as the final kinetic energy of rotation minus the initial kinetic energy of rotation. And where does this change come from? It comes from the work done by this torque when it's displacing the object by an angular distance of delta theta. So we write the work done by the torque goes into changing the kinetic energy of rotation of the system. So just like for a linear system, this equation here is known as work kinetic energy theorem for a rotating system. Explicitly we can write, since the work has been determined to be torque times angular displacement, that equals to the change in kinetic energy which is half times the moment of inertia of the system omega f squared so this is the final kinetic energy of rotation of the system 
minus the initial angular speed squared of the system. So with Ki being the initial kinetic energy of rotation of the system. So just as a conclusion, the following work kinetic energy system for a rotating system can be divided up into two cases. The first case is when the torque is a constant. So in this case, torque times the angular displacement equals the change in the kinetic energy of rotation of the system. Now, if you have a variable torque, namely a torque that depends on angle, then the left-hand side should involve an integral like that, and the right-hand side is as before, the change in the kinetic energy rotation of the system. Let's look at the following numerical exercise and test everything that we have learned so far on this particular exercise. So we have a solid sphere, the mass of which is 2 kg, and the radius is 1 meter. Now, it is turning about this vertical axis like that, and it's being acted upon by a constant force 5 newtons in the direction shown. Let's assume that it's initially at rest, it was not spinning, and after that, at the action of 5 newton force, it creates a certain amount of constant torque that causes us to rotate by this much angle, 3 revolutions, which means 3 times 2 pi in radians, so 3 times. Now we want to know at the end of that 3 revolution, what is its angular speed? Let's first calculate its moment of inertia since this is a solid sphere. The moment of inertia for such a solid sphere is given by 2 fifth the mass times the square of the radius. So it's going to be 4 over 5 kg meter squared. The next thing to evaluate is the torque provided by this constant force. So because the direction of the constant force and the position vector is 90 degrees. The force is in a direction tangential to the rim of the sphere. It's given by 5 times the radius, which is 1. So that is 5 newton meter. Therefore, the work done by this torque is given by torque times the angular displacement. We have already computed the torque. It's 5. The angular displacement is 3 ref. So in radian is 3 times 2 pi radians, which will give you 30 pi joules. In order to find the final angular speed, we need to use the work kinetic energy theorem that states that 30 joule work causes the kinetic energy to change. So the initial, the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. Initial kinetic energy is zero because initially the system is not rotating and the final kinetic energy is given by half times the moment of inertia of the solid sphere which we have already determined is 4 fifth times the final angular speed squared and you can solve for the final angular speed which will turn out to be 15.35 radiant per second. So it's just a simple numerical exercise on the things that we have covered. One other thing that we want to discuss here is power, which we know it is quantified in the units of watts, so capital W is the abbreviation. Now this is the definition, the rate of change of work. So if you have a system that is turning through an angle, let's say theta, and it's being acted upon by a torque tau, the work is, of course, tau times that angular distance. Now, if the torque is constant, you can take that torque outside, and you get d theta dt. And we know what this is. The d theta dt is quite simply the angular speed of the system. So, so we can also calculate power using this equation. 
Now, if we desire to calculate, let's say, the average power instead of instantaneous power, so this is instantaneous power, this is instantaneous power, if you want to calculate average power for a motion, then you can do it in two ways. You can take the amount of work done, divide that by the amount of time interval taken to do that amount of work, or quite simply you can use that equation, which will give you torque times the average angular speed. So the average angular speed is the final angular speed plus the initial angular speed divided by 2. So another way to calculate average power. Let's look at the following problem. So you have a constant torque of 10 newton meter and this torque is exerted on a wheel mounted on this particular axis so that the whole system rotates in that manner. The value of the moment of inertia is given to be 3 kg meter squared. If the wheel starts from rest, so that means the initial angular speed is 0 radian per second. Find the work done by the torque in 8 seconds, so time interval of 8 seconds, and then kinetic energy the end of this time interval, and also the average power used in this process. To calculate the work done by the torque, we need to know the torque, which we already do, it's 10 newton meter, times the angular displacement. The angular displacement can be found from rotational kinematics because this is a problem with constant torque, and it's given by half alpha t squared plus omega i t. Now we know omega i is zero, so that term goes away, but we still need to know the alpha, the angular acceleration. Now alpha is given by this equation. Now we know torque, torque is 10, moment of inertia is 3, so alpha is 10 over 3 radian per second squared. So using this value in here will give you half times 10 over 3, t is 8 seconds, so 64 t squared that is, and you will get an angular displacement of 106.67 radians. And now we can calculate the work. Putting that into here, the work will simply become 10, because the torque is 10, times 106.67, which will give you 1066.7 joules. So that is the amount of work done by the torque. Next, the kinetic energy at the end of that 8 seconds. Now we know the work done is the change in kinetic energy. So the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy of rotation. Initially, there is no rotation, so it is zero. So the work done is 1066.7 joules. The final kinetic energy is the kinetic energy at the end of that 8 seconds interval. So the 8th second. So it must also be 1066.7 joule. And that is the second part. Finally, the average power. Now, we can do this in two ways. So let's do the work way. So when we say the work way, we take the amount of work over the time interval. So we know we have calculated the work. That is 1066.7 joules done in 8 seconds. And that's going to give you 133.3 watts. So that is the average power. Another way to do it is using the torque. Torque times the average angular speed. Now we know what the torque is. Torque is 10. The average angular speed is the final angular speed plus the initial angular speed, which is 0, divided by 2. So what is the final angular speed? The angular speed at the 8th second. Again, it's given by the kinematics equation. Omega f plus omega i plus alpha t. Alpha is 10 over 3 times 8. So radian per second. If you put this result in here, we will get the same 133.3 watts that we obtained earlier. And that solves the problem. Thank you for watching.